Hello everyone, my name is Veronique Kirmer. I'm Director of Author and Reviewer Services at Nature Publishing Group. I'm sorry I cannot be with you uh, in person today, but I'm very grateful and I'd like to thank the organizers for the opportunity to present our perspective at Nature Publishing Group with regard to ORCIDs and, and how we have, we have looked at um, integration of ORCID in our, in our publishing platform. I also want to say that I, I currently serve on the board of director of ORCID and, and therefore you will not be surprised to hear that my view is one of a strong supporter of ORCID but I hope to convince you that, that it's actually for the, for the right reasons and that ORCID is really uh, a very important added value to the scientific community in, in, in general. I've been asked to, to tell you about the integration specifically of ORCID at uh, Nature Publishing Group and, and I'd like to start by sort of looking at what, what are the benefits for publishers of using persistent unique identifiers of the type that ORCID provides. I think it, it's quite obvious, right? The, the, there is a clear alignment of purpose in, in what ORCID is trying to do, which is connecting research and researchers and what publishers are trying to do. Obviously there are internal benefits as well and these are common with other uh, organizations, pretty much any organizations that adopt these, these persistent unique identifiers. It's really that it allows you to integrate multiple internal systems, multiple internal databases and really to disambiguate user accounts um, between these systems and, and the contributions that, that different users make to different parts of the organization. So that's, that's an internal um, benefit and it's one that it's not is not unique to publishers. I think more importantly what, what's, what is unique to publishers and, and very important for them is the fact that there are very strong external benefits. Obviously attribution is a core function of what publishers do. We do it to provide uh, proper credit and, and to provide accountability for the, the, the content we publish. This is a question that is really helped by the existence of uh, persistent unique identifiers. It's also something that allows us to, to provide a persistent association of, of the authors with, with their published work. At the moment, you know, authors are obviously mobile, they, they, they move institute, they change affiliation, uh, some of them change their name in the course of their career and um, a paper that you publish today with, um, with an, an author named um, in, a, in a certain way and with a certain affiliation, uh, might, you might lose that association um, in, in two years time. And this is a problem for which we don't have a solution at the moment but where uh, persistent unique identifiers can really help. It's also important for something that we're trying to do more and more which is to enrich our um, content by linking it to, to additional content elsewhere. And that might be, for example, data sets that are found in, in data repositories, it might be related papers, it may be, might be protocols and methods. And, and doing so not only by linking pieces of content, but by also linking individuals and, and indicating their contribution is, is very important because it allows us to do this with proper attribution and really differentiate the different kinds of contributions in a paper, which is, which is very important. Having a, a good um, uh, disambiguation of authors uh, would also um, allow a better search functionality on our website. And finally, something we're exploring as well is, um, is using these persistent identifiers to try to provide more credit to reviewers. Obviously, we're very grateful to the, the work that reviewers are, are doing for publishers, but at the moment, at least in our system, this happens very much behind this, behind the scenes, and this is something uh, that we'd like to um, we'd like to acknowledge the role of reviewers more, and um, and we're looking at persistent identifiers to help us with that. I'm going to explore these these different elements in a little bit more detail in in a moment, but I think an important question that that we might want to to start by asking, we've been talking about um, persistent unique identifiers, and the question is why ORCID? why is ORCID the solution? And I think that to me what's very very important um, about ORCID is that it's really a truly interoperable um, system across the industry as it's really broadly defined. When I call it the industry I, I don't just mean the publishing industry, it's really the research industry. And, and ORCID is really establishing itself as, as not as a unique um, specific entity but, um, but as a bridge between existing systems, 
um, a bridge between existing identifiers. And it's really in this um, representation, you see it at the center of, 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 this, um, of this circle, um, helping and, and playing a facilitator role. We were, were seeing that the interactions between ORCID and, and other par uh, partners in, in, the, in the research enterprise, such as funders and societies, data repositories, universities, and also other systems of identifiers um, is actually very, very important. It's also um, an organization that has principles that are, that are um, very dear to us. They're open principle. Um, they are, it's a non-for-profit organization. It has made the promise of being always free of charge to researchers. And so I think these are principles so, so it's, that we hold very dear and that we feel are, are really aligned um, with, what we, what, with the kind of service we want to offer. I think this has been confirmed in a way by, by the fact that ORCID has really seen a very um, rapid uh, growth curve of, of adoption. Uh, we know have, uh, um, since, since the launch of ORCID in, in, in October 2012, we know have more than um, uh, 1.25 million of ORCID identifiers in the registry. And this has been unprecedented in the, in the area of identifiers in, in the research community. So I think that these are, these are all um, things that speak in, in favor of ORCID as being really the identifier solution. And I think it's really, if you want to see it in, in, in another way, the way I like to think about it is basically ORCID is about plumbing. It's not an entity in itself, it's about plumbing between all these different entities that make up the, the, and, and, and our stakeholders in the research enterprise. It's been very well adopted by, by many uh, of the big publishers and that's very important because it's, it's important that we have something that is interoperable between publishers but, but more importantly, it's really linking these publishers to the rest of the enterprise. It's, it's linking them to funding agencies. We've seen big players such as the National Institute of Health in the US, the Wellcome Trust, the European Commission in the context of their Horizon 2020 program that are really um, encouraging and promoting uh, the use of ORCID in, in grant applications um, at the very early stages of research. That's very important. Even earlier, uh, we've seen universities who are starting to, to adopt ORCID. In an ideal system, what you want is for a researcher very early in their careers, while they're still students, to basically register for an ORCID and continue using this ORCID throughout their career, having uh, that ORCID follow them and capture all their contributions, including the things they do later on through um, uh, societies and research organizations, including their contributions in terms of data to, to repositories, finally to the publishing uh, landscape. All these elements that are very important and where, where ORCID is really providing um, a, good, a good solution. This speaks to the, the growth curve that I was telling you about. It's been a very steady and consistent growth and we see that we see um, adoption of ORCID continuing to increase and obviously the more players, the more members are actually integrating ORCID in their systems, the more researchers become aware of ORCID, they encounter the possibility to use ORCID in their, in their scientific life, this is going to continue to drive um, a registration of, of ORCID. So we're really in a system where the, both the, the organizations that are adopting uh, and integrating ORCID in their systems and the research community are both contributing to making that registry um, the largest possible uh, registry of, of researchers um, in the world. On to our um, integration at, at Nature Publishing Group. Um, so it basically starts with uh, manuscript submission. We're using e-journal press system as a, as a manuscript tracking system and we've um, integrated in there um, in, in the registration process at submission uh, the, the capability uh, for user to um, either attach an ORCID that they um, already have or to qu quickly create uh, an ORCID at that uh, submission stage. Importantly, um, the ORCID there is, is, is validated by the user via the um, OAuth um, uh, system that ORCID provides and therefore uh, we have a very strong association and a validated uh, ORCID associated with a, a user account in our manuscript tracking system. This ORCID follows the manuscript throughout, uh, through production, goes to our typesetters, um, eventually um, we have a, a, an XML file with the ORCIDs which is um, sent to the typesetters 
who um, add them in, in the article XML. And so at publication, the ORCID is part of the, of the published paper in the, of the XML. And we also send um, ORCIDs to uh, third party um, indexers uh, such as Crossref. So, um, so the integration is really from the submission of the manuscript to its publication and, and indexing. At submission, this is how it looks like. You see the, on the top of the page the question about creating or, or linking um, an ORCID. As I said, it's very important that this relationship is authenticated, so we really have a relationship that is ascertained. Um, we also ask in this process um, for um, Nature Publishing Group to be set as a trusted party by the individual, which allows us to read from their ORCID record and, and eventually even write on their ORCID record. The ORCID information is used to pre-populate the information, so it's really trying to also make, make the system easier for authors and, and facilitating submission. ORCID becomes associated with that, that user account. Upon publication, here is how it looks like. So if you click on an author name who has provided an ORCID during the, the consideration of the manuscript, uh, we are linking um, to this to the ORCID account, the article page. So you really have now a very strong association between the article and, and its author via these persistent identifiers and the article, be it the ORCID and uh, the DOI. So this is what the current integration looks like. This is uh, what we have at the moment. We are asking for ORCIDs early in the in the submission process. Through the submission process, we're, ac we're asking for other uh, persistent identifiers, for example, the FundRef codes, which characterize the funding agency that has uh, provided support for the study. And eventually, when the manuscript is published, it has a unique identifier as the manuscript, which is a DOI. It has a collection of ORCIDs IDs that are associated with it. We sent all this information to Crossref, and this is where we are now. We're also working uh, with Crossref and with other publishers to go one step further and basically complete the loop by, by updating the ORCID record of that researcher with the, the recent publication. And that's very important because I think it's a service to authors. They don't need to remember to go and update their profiles. I think it's something that university administrators appreciate a lot. We see that as a good service. And it's also important because now we're starting to create in the ORCID record assertions that are really third-party assertions. So they are association with the, the ORCID record that are um, verified by a third party, in this in this case by the by the publisher. Hoping that we're actually quite close to being able to do that. We're, we're not there yet, but, but we're working very strongly on that. I think as we're doing this, and we're doing this with more and more unique identifiers, we're basically growing that, that ecosystem of, of unique identifiers and, and of metadata that is associated with the paper. We're basically able to connect more things. When I say things, it's, it's all these things that have a unique identifier. For example, the source of funding via Fundref. It's the paper via the DOI, the, obviously the researcher via the ORCID. Within the paper, you, you now start to have a bit more granularity. Some publishers provide sub-DOIs for individual figures, for example. Again, this is a unique identifier. And we, uh, in particular, have close relationships to data repositories where we basically mandate that the authors submit their data and post their data in these open repositories. And we include the accession number, which serves as a unique identifier in the paper. So we really have now more and more of an ecosystem where you really have all these different pieces of information that are really clearly identified. And importantly, that can start acting as metadata. They can start being queried by system, including by machines. So having all this machine-readable ecosystem is very important to, to enrich the content, to make it more discover discoverable and, and more transparent. As we start pointing like that to more um, granularity, um, to different elements of the papers, to, to data sets, for example, it becomes very important to, to acknowledge exactly the specific contributions of individual researchers. And that's something that we've been adamant about, at, at, at least at the Nature Publishing Group since, since 2009, is trying to provide author contribution statements. We've done that, and I think ORCID has given us and other publishers an impetus to actually do things better. This is basically a very, very quick summary of, of these 
author contribution statements that we've been asking, this is in particular at the Nature Journal, uh, for the past five years. This text mining analysis was done by Micah Altman at the MIT libraries, and you really see that some very key types of contributions are, are dominating. You have a lot of granularity, but you also have um, very strong contributions that you see again and again. At the moment, it's really rather static because we include that as, as text in the paper. With uh, ORCID, uh, you, you start really having this desire of doing a better job and, and trying to turn this into, into metadata that can accompany the paper. So there has been a working group that was set up thanks to, uh, in particular, Liz Allen from the Wellcome Trust and Amy Brandt, uh, who was at Harvard and is now at the um, at Digital Science, which is a, a sister company to, to Nature Publishing Group. I've participated in this working group where, where we've basically used that data we have on author contributions to establish a taxonomy of contributions. We've, we've done that in collaboration with, with other publishers, with funders, and with scientists to really trying to help to establish this standard vocabulary. And, and recently, in 2014, that initiative has been amplified um, thanks to the support of NISO and CASRAI, who uh, were two um, uh, standard promoting organizations. And we now have uh, very recently published this taxonomy of, of author contributions. And I think that's, that's a perfect example of something that, that where ORCID can really inspire people to do, to do things better. If you think about it, you now have DOIs with unique identifiers, authors with unique identifiers, and basically to link these a taxonomy of contribution all of which which can be queried in a machine readable format that really is starting to enrich our scientific record as i said i feel it's very important for credit and also for accountability so this was just one example of the things that can be made possible with unique identifiers like orchid i'm sure there will be many more applications um, coming in the future so i'm going to stop here it's been a pleasure talking to you even though i'm in a completely remote location my email address is there i'm very happy to to take further questions I wish you a very good uh, rest of the conference. Thank you for our attention.